Hey guys, what's up? It's Ryan here. Today we are going to be talking about knives. If you're a knife aphiliac like me, somebody who really enjoys sharp things, stabby things, cutty things, anything of that manner, you might enjoy today's video. But for those of you guys who own an Ikea knife or one of those bullshit multi-colored bitch ass knives that you get at the grocery store, you might actually learn something. So let's get into it. I'm gonna be talking about my personal knives that I use in a restaurant kitchen, what knife to get for a home cook, for an entry level cook, and specialty knives and what they're used for. Home cooks. So I'm gonna give you three options here. They're knives that I have recommended to other people or have been recommended to me. The cheapest option is a Victorinox 8 inch chef knife. Super durable knife, throw anything at it, it's gonna handle great. Definitely my go-to for somebody who doesn't want to spend too much money on a chef knife, but wants something that is non-slip, easily taken care of. It's generally pretty cheap. Um, it's actually the original company that made Swiss Army knives. It comes in around 50 US dollars, 70 Canadian or something like that. A bit more expensive than a Victorinox, we have a German chef knife. Um, this is a Mercer. I got this one at culinary school. Um, it's all right. It's not bad. Uh, some kind of stainless steel. I'm not entirely sure. The one I would recommend would be a Zwilling 8 or 10 inch knife. A Zwilling 8 inch comes around 75 US dollars or something like that. They go on sale quite often. I think right now it's 50% off on their website. The reason I like German chef knives is because they're quite durable. Japanese chef knives can be somewhat fragile and you have to be taking care of them a little bit more. But for home cooks who really want to impress their dinner guests, I would highly recommend getting a Japanese chef knife. Probably getting a Kyoto shape or just a general chef knife or a Santoku if you prefer that. Uh, Japanese chef knives, like I said, they are a little bit harder to take care of. Um, but definitely do get super sharp. Your slices are gonna be super small. You wanna stay away from using them on bone or firmer ingredients like a big butternut squash. If you're gonna be slicing into something like fish, a Japanese knife will probably handle the situation just a little bit better. A nice Gyudo chef knife will come in around $100 USD, upwards to $200. Um, I would probably recommend around the $150 range, so then you can have something that will last a very long time, something that's easier to take care of. My personal choice is the Hariyuki Gyoma. It's a 210 millimeter, so around 10 inches chef knife. I'll post a link in the description for the Zwilling, the Victorinox, and the Hariyuki. All of them are a stainless steel instead of a carbon steel. Uh, not that you need to really know too much about that as an entry level cook or somebody who's just cooking at home. Just know that uh, stainless steel is a little bit easier to take care of, but doesn't quite get as sharp as a carbon steel. Don't really have to worry about it too much at this point. Um, just know that stainless steel is generally where you want to lean towards for your first chef knife. And for you entry level cooks who are wanting to enter the restaurant industry, um, any of the options I said earlier will really do well. I'd probably recommend getting the Victorinox first. I'd recommend that knife for anyone who is keen on entering the industry and wanting to have a good reliable knife that can take a beating. And to match it, I'd probably recommend getting a paring knife as well. But the combination of a chef knife that's around 10 to 12 inches and a paring knife will be able to handle any prep needs that you have in an industrial kitchen. And I'm sure that you'll be able to ask people to borrow a knife if you have a specialized task that requires something different. But for like 99% of the tasks, a chef knife and a paring knife will do excellent. Even for home cooks, I wouldn't really recommend getting a big box set of knives, but instead spending that same amount of money on a chef knife and a paring knife. You don't really need anything else. There are specialty knives like longer slicers or vegetable knives or whatever the case may be. You don't really need to spend all that extra money on knives that you're not going to use. Personally, I have a knife addiction and I also have something called zero self-control. So I like specialty knives. I probably spend more money on knives than I need to. A lot of them are not used every day, but generally I do get use out of all my knives in the week. Even if it's just for 15, 20 minutes, it might help me with a specific task. 
yeah, I'm just gonna go through what knives that I have, why I bought them. This is my smaller petty knife. You can see it here, it has a koi pattern, which I thought was pretty cool. It's pretty thin, it doesn't really have a thick spine, unlike my other petty knife here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but maybe you'll get a little bit of a glance. This one I use for chopping small vegetables, Brussels sprouts, shallots, uh, jalapenos, stuff like that. It's made out of a mix between carbon and stainless steel, so it does get a little bit sharper than stainless steel, but it is a little easier to take care of than a full carbon. So it's a little bit of a balance between both worlds, that's why I like it. The bevel on the knife is nice and wide, so it makes an easier sharpening. And that's something I would recommend looking for when purchasing your own knife. My second petty, this is actually the first knife that I bought out of culinary school. It has a Damascus print along it. Um, I really love this knife. It is a VG10 stainless, so this is actually the type of steel that I would recommend for most of you home cooks. It's, it's nice, that has a nice big bevel. You can really clearly see it on this knife. Um, I just sharpened them today, so it is ready to go. I generally use this knife for butchery. It's not a vegetable knife, it's more of a butchery knife. Cleaning like chicken thighs, taking out the bone. I also use it in service sometimes because it's not a carbon steel knife and it's nice and small. I can use it in a restaurant setting where it's like nice, quick, I need a knife, ah, something small, easy. Cut a carrot lengthwise, cut a couple of shallots if I'm running low, just stuff like that. So I find that this knife is pretty versatile but also the thicker spine really helps keep it straight and firm. Next, we have my Nakiri. This is a vegetable cleaver. Um, I love this knife. It is Aogami Blue Super, which is one of the nicest, if not the nicest, Japanese steel. It used to have a black print along here. Just like the lettering, it was across the entire side. Now I took a rust eraser on it and it's all nice and shiny. Because it's a high carbon steel, you can't really use it on acidic vegetables. Just, it's kind of annoying to not be able to use your carbon vegetable knife on shallots, onions, garlic, peppers, um, anything really with an element of acidity. It will just leave marks or it will start to rust your knife. Um, so when buying a vegetable knife, if you are interested in one of these, I would recommend getting a stainless steel, unless it's like used for squash. It does have a thicker spine here. It's really great for cutting into big heavy vegetables like squash. I love this knife. It actually is super, super sharp. Next, we have my Gyudo Chef Knife. It is a little bit interesting of a shape. I believe this is a B2 powdered steel. It's a little bit harder than a stainless steel. It has a really strong edge retention, so it's gonna last a very long time after you sharpen it. Um, one downside is it doesn't get as sharp as a lot of other knives. Like a carbon knife or a VG10 stainless might get a little bit sharper because it will be finer, but this one will definitely stay sharp for longer. I do love this knife. It is a 195 millimeter. It's right in between an eight and a 10 inch, which is not very common for a lot of chef knives. I'm in love with it, but I also think that there's better knives for the price point because I did pay something like $330 for it. So definitely looking at the value of what knife you're getting as well is quite important. And finally, out of all my specialty knives, we have my Sujihiki. This is one of my favorite knives. Just look at that hammer tone across it. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, not only that, it has a huge bevel on it, which makes it super easy to sharpen. Um, it is a mix between carbon and stainless, like this one here. It has a nice thick spine so that it's nice and rigid. It is super sharp. Yeah, I could just hold on to it for days. Any task that I can do with this, I want to do with it. But then again, like I kind of want to keep it sharp, so I don't want to use it on a lot of things. So generally wouldn't recommend a knife like this for a home cook. And just like some really inexpensive knives, some of the ones that might not work very well, we still want to take care of the knives that we have. Um, and taking proper care of your knife is super, super important. Making sure that they're always sharp is something that will help the knife slip less so that we take care of our fingers. So really taking care of your knife is like taking care of your own body. As home cooks, 
it's really not too bad to get your knife sharpened every three to six months. Getting your own sharpening stone would be a really great addition to your home kitchen. However, it can be quite tricky to use. There are a lot of YouTube tutorials online for sharpening knives. Personally, I don't feel like I'm knowledgeable enough to do it at this point in time. And for a honing rod, I would generally recommend getting a ceramic one. A steel and a diamond one are really good too. Uh, it only takes a couple swipes in order to keep your knife sharp, lasting longer. It's just a part of knife care. And to finish off the video, I just wanna emphasize respecting your knife, whether it's a $30 knife or a $300 knife. Just making sure that we set it down gently, wiping it clean every time, making sure it's dry and you know, just stuff like that. Especially when I take care of them when they're handcrafted, like Japanese knives from overseas. Cause you know, supporting that blacksmith's work and having this piece of handcrafted material that you can use to cook and create your own home culture of food. And taking care of that delicate tool can be such an important part of your entire home atmosphere. Making sure that your knife is sharp means that you're taking care enough for the ingredients, you're taking care of your own fingers, and it just will give you a more holistic idea of what's important in the kitchen. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, giving a big shout out to Knifeware, the company that I purchased all these knives at here in Vancouver. Definitely my favorite store in Vancouver to shop at, as well as they have a really great online store, which is linked to the Japanese knife that I have there in the description. Um, free orders over 200 bucks. Not sponsored at all. I just like supporting the businesses that I find very good and the ones that are sourcing directly from blacksmiths in Japan. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, give it a check out and peace.